Hospital doctors and nurses always expect the unexpected. Let's see how they fix our first patient. In Manchester, the emergency department have a new admission. 13-year-old Reese, who's come in with a badly battered face. I damaged my forehead and my nose and my, my lip there. You can say that again. I'm amazed you can even speak. It's hard to smile because my, my lips like falling and I can't move it up. I'd just keep a straight face, Reese. So how on earth did you end up like that? Well, what happened was, lovely balloons, Reese was celebrating his cousin's birthday party at the local bike park. He was on a half pipe, doing his thing. The crowd were loving it, so he set off for the big one. Uh, that's a steep slope. Nice big stadium, too. No pressure, Reese. He set off, but the slope was so steep, and Reese tried to stop. He pulled on his brake, but he did it too hard, and the next thing he knew, he flew over the handlebars. Oh dear, no more bike. Yep. He went flying through the air until he landed smack on his face. Ouch! Luckily, Reese was wearing a helmet, and his injuries aren't as bad as they look, but it's still pretty uncomfortable. I find it very hard to eat and I've become a tongue very swollen. Well, there's definitely no chance of getting your mouth around a burger right now, that's for sure. Reese was treated just after the accident. But now he's back in hospital to get his wounds checked out and find out if he'll need any more treatment. And the man doing the finding out is Professor Kevin Mackway-Jones. Well, we need to take the dressings down, have a really good look at his wounds and make sure they're not infected. Then we need to decide exactly what dressings need to be put on there and whether there's any surgery that needs to be done immediately or whether that can wait for later, if it's needed at all. First things first, Nurse Michael needs to get those dressings off. I'm going to take the dressings off and see what everything looks like underneath. Is that OK? Although it looks nasty, swelling is part of the body's healing process. When you're injured, chemicals are released which cause our blood vessels to widen. This allows more blood and infection-fighting cells to get to the injured area, but some of them leak into the surrounding tissue, causing the whole area to swell up. Just like Reese's lip. So with the dressing off, how's it looking? The one at the top is healing well. Yeah, the one over your nose is healing well. The one up above your lip, OK, that's a little bit deeper. So I think what we need to do is redress it. We'll bring you back to clinic so that we can see how it's doing and we'll make a decision when you come back to clinic next time. Although his nose and forehead can be left dressing free, Reese's lip still needs to be covered. And he'll have to come back in two weeks' time when the swelling's gone down to see if surgery is necessary. I just can't wait to get back to normal because I need to get back eating again. Fingers crossed some decent food will be on the card soon, mate. We'll be back to find out what happens with Reese's lip later on. I think I can hear his stomach rumbling. Ouch. Don, no one is going to believe you're taller than Neil. Let's head back to the emergency department to see how our patient's getting on. Back in accident in emergency, 13-year-old Reese came into hospital with a bashed-up face after a biking accident. I damaged my forehead and my nose and my, my lip there. He'd been at a party, trying out some bike tricks, but a big slope, uh, a really, really big slope, caught him out, and he ended up flying over his handlebars onto his face. Although it wasn't as bad as it looked, Reese couldn't wait for the swelling in his lip to go down. I find it very hard to eat and I've become a tongue very swollen. And the doctors were also waiting so they could decide if he'd need any plastic surgery. Two weeks later, and Reese is back for his checkup. And I'm pleased to see his face looking, well, pretty transformed. The swelling's gone down a lot, and I can't eat all my favourite food and everything. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried about you wasting away there for a while. Well, with the important news out of the way, let's meet Professor Simon Carley and find out if you're going to need that surgery or not. I think that's starting to heal quite nicely, actually. The bits on your forehead really almost completely healed, haven't they? His best chance is for his body to do all the work, to do the job that it's designed to do. Your skin needs to be a tough barrier so it can protect you, and it's designed to repair itself constantly. All the time, new skin cells are working their way up from the bottom layer to the top, which usually takes about a month. 
But because Reese's injury is severe and his skin is healing, it's going to take a bit longer. The bits down here, they're doing pretty well as well. To know what it's eventually going to completely look like, it's probably going to be about six months. Six months might sound like ages, but every skin cell contains pigment, which is what gives your skin its colour. It's going to take a while for all of Reese's cells to reach the top layer and his skin colour to return to normal. So I think you can already see, just on that patch on the, on the forehead there, if you look in the middle parts of that, can you see how some of the pigment is already starting to come yeah. through on the inside? I suspect that when you first did that, that looked completely pink. Yeah. And now you're already seeing some of the pigment cells coming through. Yeah. The doctor yeah. said that, oh, that it's OK and it's healing properly. That could see my of skin tone developing underneath. With Reese's skin healing well, he might not need that surgery after all. I know there was talk about plastic surgery and stuff like that. I think at this stage, I don't think that's going to be necessary. I'm amazed that it's healed so well, actually. Mm. Bodies, yeah. bodies are pretty remarkable things. I'm just fully because I won't have to go into surgery. <laughs> you know, to be honest, you can get back on your bike pretty soon as well. It's a good result for Reese, but just go steady on that bike. <laughs> We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Everyone's going to want to try this one. We've got a really tasty trick for you, and I'm going to use Zand as my first volunteer. So you fancy a donut? Oh, lovely. No, 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 it's not how the trick works. You've got to slow down. So what we're going to do is we're going to give Zand this donut, which is covered in sugar. And Zand, you've got to eat the whole thing without licking your lips. You think you can do this? Yeah, that's easy. I could do that all day. OK, ready? Here we go. There's the donut. Now, let's see if Zand can eat his donut without licking his lips. Difficult. You're doing quite well so far, Zand, but can you keep it up? No, oh, you've licked! Oh, no! <laughs> Who thinks that they could do the trick well? Me! What, you think you're better than me? Yeah! Well, let's see how this lot get on. <laughs> They're trying very hard, and so far, no one's licked. Oh. You're going to lick soon. You're going to lick soon. Sooner or later, it becomes too much to resist. Oh. <laughs> He's licking. She's definitely licking. And so is he. So why is it so hard to resist licking the sugar off your lips? Oh. When the jam and sugar was on your lips, it was sort of irritating. You wanted to get rid of the irritation and wanted the tastiness of it. Charlie has almost got it. Your lips have more sensory receptors than pretty much anywhere else, making them super sensitive to even the smallest bit of sugar. So, as soon as the receptors feel something touching them, they tell your brain to remove the irritation. That's why you lick your lips. It's not just that you get the tasty treat of having all the jam and sugar on your lips, but you also... What's <laughs> on? What are you doing? I'm just practicing. <laughs> Our first patient was expecting a normal day. And now they've ended up in accident and emergency. Let's see him get fixed. This is Accident and Emergency in Manchester, the place for all medical mishaps. And what on earth's happened here? Has he superglued his hands to his nose? No, Zand, this is eight-year-old Max, and the problem is not with his nose. A few minutes ago, I realised that my lip was so all swollen. Did he say he had a swollen lip? Yes, look. Ooh, it is swollen. But why are you holding it? When it touches my teeth, it hurts. It hurts if it touches your teeth. Got it. So how did Max's lip end up so large? Well, it's all a bit of a mystery. Max was having a normal day. He'd been to school, like normal. And then afterwards, he'd been swimming, like normal. And then he came home and had one of his favourite meals. Mmm, meat pie. Yummy. Then he sat down to watch his favourite cooking show. This is making me hungry. But just as they were getting to dessert, Max felt something funny going on with his lip. It started to tingle. And then it grew. And it grew. And it grew. Ouch. 
It really stung when it started going really big. I bet. And with such strange swelling, let's open the case of Max's mystery mammoth mouth. Has he had any allergic reactions in the past? Yes, yeah. he's got allergies to peanuts and white fish. OK, and he's not had no nuts or anything near him. So Max doesn't think he's eaten nuts or white fish, which he's allergic to. But with symptoms like this, he's taking a medicine called antihistamine, just in case it is an allergic reaction. Well, here's someone who can bust that lumpy lip. It's Dr. Sara Syed. So was it sore? Was it tingly? It was stinging. It was stinging, was it? Yeah. OK. Did you feel like your throat was getting tight or anything? No. No. Dr. Sara needs to give Max a thorough examination to find out whether or not he's having an allergic reaction. Oh, can you just sit off me? Ah. Uh... If he is, the biggest concern is that it could get worse and cause his throat to swell up, making it hard to breathe. OK, is that sore at all? No. OK, so there's no swelling at the back of your throat, which is really good. Luckily, Max's throat and airways are clear, but what about his lip? Is it from an allergy? It looks like some form of allergic reaction, yeah. OK? Um, just with there being the swelling and this tingling, it kind of all fits in right. with that picture. The good news is that the antihistamine has started to work, and another 20 minutes later, Max's lip is looking smaller. How are you feeling? Better. Yeah? High five, antihistamine. What exactly has made him have that allergic reaction is uh, a little bit of a mystery. It seems like his immune system just responded quite strongly to something. It might be that Max has developed a new allergy. To try and find out, he'll return for an allergy test in a week's time. Take care. We'll be back later to find out how he gets on. <laughs>